Hello and welcome back to Sports Talk. Alongside Michael Tamaro and Zach Karnschrager, I am Jack McGalligat. And guys, the MLB season officially underway. NBA play-in tournament ended yesterday, so we are going into the playoffs this weekend. First round action. It's an exciting time. I always loved the early MLB season so much, like crazy stories and hot starts. And, you know, NBA playoffs, always some of the best sports that you're going to get uh, all year, for sure. And, you know, we got a, a hot story to start off here, one Zach's passionate about. So why don't you take it away, Zach? Yeah, so, well, guys, uh, pitcher uh, Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers are now the subject of some early season drama. After uh, Kershaw's first start of the season, Kershaw was perfect through seven innings, uh, giving up no hits or walks and striking out 13 batters in seven innings, which mm -hmm. is... You know, there's something very difficult to do. Uh, and what has been an extremely controversial decision, Dodgers manager Dave Roberts pulled Kershaw out of the game to start out the bottom of the eighth inning with his pitch count only being at 80 pitches. Guys, this marks the first time in the history of Major League Baseball a pitcher has been removed from a perfect game after seven innings while throwing 80 or fewer pitches. So what are your guys' thoughts? Mike, you'll take it away. Okay, so my opinion on this matter is uh, extremely controversial to most uh, baseball fans. Mm -hmm. And I think that Dave, Dave Roberts' decision was perfectly uh, plausible and acceptable decision. I, it was the right decision. And the reason that, because uh, obviously we know that the season started later due to the lockout. And um, it causes a shortened... Spring yeah. training too, so the pitchers. So mm. technically, it's even though it's the regular season, it's still managers still consider it a yeah. spring training. Specifically, it was one week that the pitchers missed for spring training, so they're still getting loosened up with their yeah. first starts. And I know he was at eight pitches and all, but still, it's like Kershaw also has a big history of injury and stuff in his shoulder and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and even Kershaw like was perfectly okay with the decision because I'm pretty sure that if he was pushing Dave Roberts and put him back in the game, Roberts would have listened to him. And I, I saw a tweet on Twitter. Um, uh, Bob Nagel tweeted. Uh, he talked about how Joe Torre took out uh, Dave, David Cohen, I believe it was. Uh, mm -hmm. After he was uh, he was out from an injury for four months and he came back, pitched like a no hitter, but he got pulled out of the game early. And Joe Torre said, like, if I didn't do that, I, I would have regretted the decision. As in, if if I didn't pull him out, I would have regretted. It. And I totally agree with that. And that's the reason why I think that Kershaw uh, decision was a uh, was a good decision. So personally, I'm of kind of two minds about this. You know, we see, you know, it's a league thing that you're talking about. The, the pitchers, they had one week. We've seen it with the league, you know, Hugh Darvish, Sean Manaya on the Padres. The, Hugh Darvish was the opening day pitcher. He, he has no hits. He gets pulled. Sean Manaya gets pulled with no hits as well. I believe both through the seventh inning. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's something that's going on in the league. Pitchers aren't getting stretched out. But at the same time, when you're at... 80 pitches, you're Clayton Kershaw. We haven't had a perfect game since Felix Hernandez in 2012, you know? It's like, I, I, I get why the manager did it, and the fact that there's no, like, actual Dodgers drama about this, like, it's all, like, media and stuff like that, I think it is more just, like, the league is understanding of, like, what's going on, and they, it's more, like, you know, we need to uh, make sure that pitcher, pitchers don't get hurt this early on. That's why there's extended bullpens and extended rosters but I mean it's disappointing if you're a baseball fan if you're going to a, a cold Minnesota game you know uh, <laughs> early April and you're and you see perfection in front of you it's not being able, it's not able to be finished that sucks so I get I mean it's just mm -hmm. it's a tough thing all around right. uh, yeah I mean you guys know my uh, you know I'm a big baseball fan as we all are uh, mm -hmm. I, I completely disagree with this decision by Dave Roberts uh, you know, like you mentioned earlier, we haven't seen a perfect game in, since 2012, and it's the Twins, for goodness sake. You, you know how they've been, uh, they've yeah. been really bad the last few years. And uh, 13 strikeouts in seven Last innings year. on 80 pitches is really, you know, it's, that's a big feat. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think he should have stayed in, and, and they should have let him go for the perfect game. You know, if it's a no-hitter, I can yeah. see, you know, take him out. But there's only been 23 perfect games in the history of Major League Baseball. And I think in this case, you just got to let him go. Yeah, that's a, that's another. He had 13 stri <laughs> strikeouts. He could have broke the strikeout record yeah. for a perfect game. It could have been historic. I mean, yeah. Clayton Kershaw, one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, Ari has his uh, stamp to Cooperstown, yeah. you know. 
I mean, it's it's a tough situation. I think you know, ba baseball fans, you know, mm -hmm. it's re it's really tough for them. But you know, organizations they've got to do what they got to do yeah. to preserve their players. We see how much how much injuries there are in MLB nowadays. Oh, yeah. It's just that with the context, it's a good decision because if if he was pitching this part in like mid eight, no, not mid April, mid May, I th I think that they routes would have kept him mm -hmm. in and stuff. And like I said, if you want to um, blame someone for Kershaw not. Uh, Pitching the full uh, perfect game, I'd probably blame the MLB owners because they're the reasons why they delayed the season. Uh, that, that's a whole other yeah. can of worms. No, uh, that, it, it, I, I'm sticking to that uh, no, you're, statement. I'm not saying you're no, wrong. It's not, they're not the full reason, but like they're partial reason yeah. just because that season delayed and they, the pitchers still need yeah. to be worked on. I, I completely agree with you. I'm just saying that's a whole other, whole other topic yeah, that we're I getting know. to. But, uh, you know, maybe try and keep it a bit more lighthearted, less uh, yeah. uh, anger. We could talk about... Uh, MLB early season, like I said, it's always just a, a fun time, and you know I want to take a moment to talk about just some highlights, stories that you know we've uh, seen so far, some hot starts. You know, me and Michael, you know, I'll start out. Saya Suzuki has just been an amazing player so far. He comes from the Japanese league, and he he uh, you know was one of the best players in the league over there, just a monster hitter. And so far, he's just been translating. It's five games in, but he's just been crushing. He has not been swinging and missing. I'm not sure if it's true now, but uh, when he hit his third home run, you know, uh, I believe it was uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, he, he had three home runs and two swing and misses on the season. That's just a crazy thing, you know, and that that's like kind of the joy for me in the early season. You get to see those crazy statistics. You get to, like, get reacclimated with, like, the – eccentricity is a baseball like uh, today I watched the White Sox and Mariners game just earlier today and you got to see them playing in basically a windstorm and it was it was just like there's two two plays in the inning where you know it's popped up in the infield yeah. and all of the right side of the infield is like going for the ball they're under it and it go and it ends up that the shortstop ends up missing a pop fly right in his position that's just like you know the craziness that I like about baseball you know yeah. We call it a, a unicorn home run, a home run that's only hit in one stadium. Gleyber Torres yesterday hit, hit a home run that's only in Yankee Stadium. It's just like get, getting reacclimated with like the fun stuff of baseball is really fun yeah. to me. Yeah, and I got some uh, highlight here. Uh, Miguel Sano um, has started off the season 0 for 19 with Oof. nine strikeouts. Yeah. I currently have the same batting average as Miguel Sano, which is <laughs> yeah. a, a triple zero. So. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, last season he didn't bat that well. He batted in the 220s, and the year before that he was 204. So uh, he's definitely been struggling the last few years. Um, and I, you know, again, you know, he's playing for the Twins, an organization that I've always disliked. <laughs> Why is that? And, and the bottom. Saw that. Um, so, just, yeah, not a lot of good things coming out of the Twins uh, right now in the last uh, early season here in the MLB. But, yeah, definitely Miguel Sano. We'll see if, uh, you know, he picks it up uh, the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Mike? I also like to talk about Jose Ramirez, how he is currently playing like the best player in baseball. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a small sample size, but he's currently a slash signs 480, 536, 1.040, and he has a .9 F4, which uh, obviously would lead him uh, first over in the league. Your favorite stat, yeah. Uh, not really, but uh, sure. Um, anyway, yeah, so Ramirez, obviously we know that he's been a, one of the top third basemen in the league, and uh, yeah. one year, he uh, it was like 2019, he struggled for a little bit, and then he returned to being Jose Ramirez, and he recently just got that contract extension from the in, the Guardians, I should say. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it was like a five years contract or something like that, and uh, look, uh, I thought the Indian, yeah. the Guardians, mm -hmm. I, I still gotta get used to saying the, the Guardians, we'll, not the we'll Indians. We'll get to it, we'll get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so... I thought they were going to start off pretty bad and finish the season like third place, but their offense has surprisingly looked yeah. pretty good so far. Stephen Kwan. Yeah. Stephen Kwan, he's been, too. He's been amazing. Rookie of the Year kid. I believe he's 24 years old, right? I mean, it's, I mean, that's the fun of this baseball. You get Sai Suzuki, you get Kwan, you get you yeah. get people that you don't you know normally associate with being an amazing hitter. It's like, like, yeah. Yeah, not to mention Kwan went, I think they said, four games without a swing and miss. So, I mean, what yeah. are we? That's like unheard of. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, it's just fun because, you yeah. know, we get these small sample sizes early on. I mean, you know, people have hot streaks during yeah. the season. You know, these people, you know, Sai Suzuki, you know, it just hits different when he, yeah. other than, you know, if he did it in August or something. It's just so fun watching these, oh, yeah. looking at these insane stats. But, it's you know, it's going to be an exciting season. 
For sure, for sure. And speaking of exciting seasons, we finished up an exciting NBA regular season, got through the play-in tournament, and now, uh, Michael, I'm sorry that the Knicks did not make the playoffs. I'm sorry it was a disappointing season. What did you expect? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, choice words from Julius Randle, but uh, that'll be another day. Yeah. Michael, do you want to take it away here for our NBA playoff talk? First of all, I'd like to correct you, Jack. The NBA play-in is technically not finished yet because the – the seed because uh, the teams that won that lost and won like are the the seven oh, and eight seed. Sorry, I'm trying. This is uh very okay. The seventh and eighth seed, the loser faces the winner of yes. nine and ten. So the plane is still going on. They have mm -hmm. uh, I believe the Cavaliers versus um, I think the Hawks, and we got the Pelicans versus the Clippers for that. Mm -hmm. So. We have Minnesota winning. Uh, the, they're officially the seventh seed. Yes. We have uh, what a the celebration! Net, wow, the Nets uh, seventh seed. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, the, the Nets. Yeah. And yeah, so we had so now we all have to determine the eighth seed for the Eastern Conference. I think the Cavs or the I, probably the Hawks. The reason because Jared Allen might not even play. Mm -hmm. So and I know that. The Hawks have a good amount of I think of I just saw that he is playing, actually, on Twitter. Uh, he, well, he saw he was like half and half, but like yes. not officially yet. But if he's not playing, I got the Hawks. But if he is playing, I think the Cavs could. And for the Western Conference, I think the Clippers will definitely win that because Paul George is healthy now, and mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the sporting cast will, I think, is better than uh, yeah. what the Pelicans have. I mean, their best player right now is CJ McCollum, and he's not really a... <laughs> a I mean, I don't know guy. if I'd say he's their best player. Brandon Ingram's there. It's debatable, but it, it's debatable. But I get what you mean. Having yes. McCollum and McIngram, yes. yeah, it it it's a bit tough. And uh, for my finals predictions, I have the Suns versus I'd say the Bucks again. Bucks again. So yeah, you're you're going you're leapfrogging the Celtics there. Yes, because the Celtics I do not think are good enough to make the finals, despite their start to this or uh, finish mm -hmm. to this uh, NBA season. Mm -hmm. And but. This time I have the series flipped as opposed to last season where the Suns will be beating the Bucks. I'd say maybe six games. I just mm -hmm. think uh, this. I just think the Suns. Well, you could beat the, the Suns were better than the Bucks last year, but I think they're way better than the Bucks uh, this year too as well. Yeah, I think that the Suns, with the experience that they have, they are definitely primed to take that Western Conference. I don't know, you know, who's really got a chance in Golden State. I don't know if I fully trust them and the supporting guests they have there. I think the Suns just have a formula that has been working for them for two seasons now. They've proven that they're good, and I think they're ready to win that championship. In the East, obviously, you know, the, the Bucks are a huge threat. I think the Celtics, I think I kind of agree with you there. I don't think that the Celtics are will be able to, you know, they might win the East, but I don't know if they're going to be able to challenge the Phoenix Suns or anybody that comes out of their West. And the thing is, I don't even know if they're getting out of the first round because they're going to be facing the Nets first round. That's a great and point. And we know the Nets are the seventh seed, but they're still a great team. I mean, because the reason why they got lower because they had injuries in the beginning of the yeah. season and stuff. And But KD and Kyrie is playing. Mm -hmm. Kyrie, and there's no vaccination uh, mandate for uh, basketball games anymore. So yeah. Kyrie's playing. So I think it's going to be a tougher matchup for Boston. Personally, I love watching the, the 76ers players, Joel LMB and James Harden. I think, you know, they, they still need to figure out that supporting cast a bit. I think next season they'll have a better shot maybe. And, and you know, James Harden, maybe he'll uh, continue to – hopefully he'll be a bit better. I mean, he's, he's great, but he's not the MVP level that he was before. I think that, you know, they, they can definitely make some noise in that Eastern Conference as well, Zach. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm really liking this uh, Celtics team. You know, starting off the season, they were, you know, three games below 500, like 21 and 23. And mm -hmm. since then, they've only lost five or six games, and they've gone really hot. Now they're 51 and 31. So, um, you know, I, I definitely favored them, you know, the the Bucks, you know, Milwaukee Bucks, you know, Giannis is still that guy. I mean, he proved it last year. And, mm -hmm, uh, for sure. And, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I got a three-way tie between those two and the Suns. It's definitely going to be an interesting playoffs. Well, three teams can't win the championship, no, Zach. <laughs> I'm just saying, those three yeah. teams are mine, too. Um, I'm probably majorly more for um, going for the Celtics. Okay. Wait, so the Celtics, Suns, and who? And the uh, Bucks. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, yeah, so we got we got the Suns, Zach's got the Celtics. Celtics yes. Okay, well, that'll be for all for us this week on Sports Talk. I am your host, Jack McGallagher, alongside Michael Tamara and Zach Harshfager. We'll see you next week. <laughs>